It's Scottish pudding time with more than a little whisky involved. That's on the great British menu in half an hour here on BBC Two after Eggheads. These five people are amongst the greatest quiz players in Britain. Together they make up the Eggheads, arguably the most formidable quiz team in the country. The question is, can they be beaten? Welcome to Eggheads, the show where a team of five quiz challengers pit their wits against possibly the greatest quiz team in Britain. You might recognise them as they have some of the country's finest quiz credentials. Please welcome our dream team. Hello, my name's Judith Keppel and I was the first person in Britain to win a million pounds on Who Wants to Be a Millionaire? Hello, I'm Kevin Ashman. I hold the record for the highest ever score on Mastermind and I'm the world quiz champion. Hi, I'm CJ Demui. I've been a winner on 15 to 1, 100% and beat the nation. Hello, I'm Daphne Fowler. I'm one of the few women to win the title of Brain of Britain and I won the grand final of 15 to 1 twice. Hello, I'm Chris Hughes. Now, I'm the current Brain of Britain and I still hold the international mastermind title. And our challengers today are the Red House Art Group from Devon. The team met when they joined their local art group and regularly paint and socialise together. Let's meet them. Hello, I'm Wendy, I'm 56 and I'm a clinical hypnotherapist. Hello, I'm Eliza, I'm 62 and I'm a freelance editor. Hello, I'm Jack, I'm 26 and I'm a student. Hello, I'm Irene, I'm 63 and I'm now retired. Hello, I'm Sue, I'm 56, I'm a retired primary school teacher. Every day there's £1,000 worth of cash up for grabs for our challengers. However, if they fail to defeat the Eggheads, the prize money, of course, rolls over to the next show. So, Red House Art Group, the Eggheads have won the last 20 games on the trot, which means today £21,000 says you can't beat the Eggheads. Well, let's get on with the game then and see what our first category is. It's going to be on the subject of entertainment. So who'd like to play? Anyone you like. OK. This is a difficult one, but I think we came to the conclusion... Jack. Jack should be Jack. Jack. Yeah. Yes. Okay. In, Jack. Okay. okay. Unanimous. This is unanimous that it's Jack because he's the young one. Okay, Jack. Who would you like to play? I'm going to take on Judith. Okay. Jack and millionaire winner Judith. To make sure there's no conferring, would you please take your positions in the question room? Now, um, Jack, uh, you and Wendy are of course related, aren't you? Yes. Wendy's my mother. <laughs> and we said um, you kind of wanted to do this but it was the decision did seem to be made for you why entertainment it's not really a strong category of any of us but i su suppose i i listen to music and watch films more often than anyone else in the, in the group so i might as well take on the category. well yeah well let's hope you listen to more music and watch more films than judith who i can tell you jack just to give you a bit of confidence um, has the the worst record of any of the airheads in this category <laughs> Just to remind you how it works, I'll ask uh, each of you three multiple choice questions on entertainment in turn. Uh, whoever gets the most correct will, of course, be in the final round, and we always let our challengers decide. Would you like to go first or second? Second, please. OK, Jack, best of luck. Let's see if you'll be appearing in the final round. Uh, not a question for you yet. This one goes to Judith. First question. In which 2005 reality television show were Tim Campbell and Syra Khan, the winner and runner-up? Big Brother, Fame Academy or The Apprentice? I wonder if that was The Apprentice. Um, I'm going to say The Apprentice and hope for the best. The Apprentice is the right answer. Well done, Judith. OK, Jack, your first question. Who directed the 2005 film Munich? Steven Spielberg, Terence Malick or Stephen Frears? Well, I'm not familiar with the film. I have a feeling that, that I would know who it was if it was Spielberg, so I'm guessing it isn't. But it's a total guess on the other two. I'll go for Malik. OK, Terence Malik. Anyone uh, seen it from the Red House Art Group? Munich? No, I haven't seen it. Any egghead? It's Steven Spielberg. 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 It's, it is Spielberg. Steven Spielberg, Jack. So um, nothing there for you, so... Let's see if Judith can forge into a, a 2 0 lead if you get this right, Judith. Your second question. In 1985, Chrissy Hind collaborated with which band on the UK number one hit single, I Got You, Babe? UB40, The Police or Madness? 
Um, I think it might be UB40. Okay, why do you think that? Um, not a huge amount of reason. Okay, <laughs> that'll do then. Had you gone for it, uh, any egghead able to tell me the right yeah. answer? Yeah, yeah. UB40. Yeah, it's UB40. Well done, Judith. So that two to you. Instinct. Well, Jack, let's see if you can get this and keep the game alive. And uh, <laughs> it's another film one. Which actress received an Oscar nomination for her role in the film Trans America? Is it Terry Hatcher, Felicity Huffman, or Eva Longoria? Uh, if I've got those names right, those are those are three actresses from Desperate Housewives, which doesn't help me much. The only one I've heard of in any other context is Hatcher, so I'll go for her. Okay, Jack. Yeah, I think you're right with the Desperate Housewives, but so uh, which one of them was in Trans America? And do we know? I don't know. No, I think it might believe. have been Felicity Huffman, but... It, it was, Wendy. It's Felicity <laughs> Huffman, Jack. Felicity Huffman. Well, Jack. You put uh, Judith in there first. They really didn't suit you, those questions, did they? Two, uh, two film questions. Bad luck. It means you won't be playing in the final round. No third question necessary for Judith. Would you both please come back and join your teams? Well, very early days, Red House Art Group. But uh, as it stands, you've lost one brain from the final round. The Eggheads haven't lost any. So our second head-to-head -to -head today. And it's going to be sport. So Wendy, Eliza, Irene or Sue? Irene. Not me. Irene. OK. Yeah, we'll yeah. Irene, Irene, go on. Since I got everybody into this, I've got to stand up and be counted and do sport. Yeah, it's only fair. Very brave of you, Irene. <laughs> and uh, who would you like to play? It can't Jay? be Judith, of course, but any of the other eggheads. Um, I'm going to uh, play against Chris. Ah, might not be a bad choice. OK, um, Irene and Chris, would you both please make your way into the question? So, Irene, um, of the uh, arts, which is your particular favourite? Um, I paint in watercolour, but I'm not very good, and I'm not very good at drawing, but my main achievement is in drawing. So when we have a chat, that's what I'm ever so good at. <laughs> drawing, not drawing. Irene, uh, would you like to go first or second? I'll go second, please. Well, they've thought out their tactics here, and they putting the eggheads into bat again. So, uh, Chris, your first question. Chris, in which target sport would competitors play a triple peel? Croquet, darts, or pool? Well, I've never heard of it in connection with darts or pool, and there's a lot of obscure terminology involved with croquet, so I have to go with croquet. Croquet is the right answer. Well done, Chris. Triple peel in croquet. OK, Irene, your first question. Which animal gives its name to a spin performed on one leg in Olympic figure skating? Is it rabbit, camel, or dolphin? Well... Um, I'm, I'm not a skater, and I watch it occasionally, but only in the days of Torville and Dean. So um, I just can't imagine a figure that is in the shape of a rabbit, and I can't imagine anything that's called a camel except something that will give you the hump. So I'm going to go for dolphin. Um, I'm afraid the answer is going to give you the hump. It is a camel. <laughs> it is a camel, I'm afraid. Anyway, um, Chris, uh, your second question then to go further into the lead. In February 2006, the footballer Mido was thrown out of which international team following a well-publicised row with his national coach? Was it Italy, Egypt or Turkey? Well, you know me and football. Um, I've not heard of any ructions in Egypt or Turkey. And it's the sort of thing they do all the time in Italy, so I have to say Italy. OK, Italy. Kevin, you should know this. I do know this, <laughs> yeah. It's Egypt. He plays for Spurs. It does. Um, it's Egypt. He plays for Egypt, not Italy. Well, potential let off there, Irene. Brain of Britain getting one wrong. If you get this right, it'll be all square. Your second question, Irene. In 2002, Britain's Jade Johnson won European and Commonwealth silver in which athletics event? Long jump, pole vault, or marathon? Okay. Um... I don't think we do very well in the pole vault. I think I might have heard of him or her if it was the marathon, so I'm going for long jump. OK. <laughs> Not sure about the sex. <laughs> Jade, if you're watching, our apologies to you. Um, it's the long jump. There's the right answer. <laughs> well done, Jade Johnson. She won European and Commonwealth silver in the long jump, and uh, well done to her. OK, Chris, you're third. The King George... 
the sixth chase at Kempton Park traditionally takes place on which day of the year? Boxing Day, New Year's Day or Easter Monday? Well, I don't think it's New Year's Day. And I don't think it's Easter Monday. I've got an idea at the back of my mind. It's Boxing Day. Hmm, Boxing Day. Well, he's not enjoying himself in there, is he, Eggheads? He's uh, floundering around. Right. Got, the last, got the last one wrong. Doesn't uh, having a bit of a guess at this, to be honest, aren't you, Chris? Mm. Yeah. Make it? Yeah, it's right. right. Boxing Day is the right answer, though, Chris. Well done. So, two to you. Well, Irene, uh, this will take us into sudden death if you get it correct. Irene, which golfer came second in the 1996 US Masters Golf Tournament despite leading the field by six clear shots at the start of the final round? Is it Jack Nicholas, Jean Van der Velde, or Greg Norman? Okay, what a relief because it was so exciting because I think the player who came up behind him and went past was Nick Faldo and the player who was so disgruntled at what was happening to his golf was Greg Norman. Well, I must say uh, both of you haven't been uh, covering yourself in glory there, even the ones you've got right, you've had a bit of a guess at them, but not there, Greg Norman, Irene, well done. Full answer too, right. Well, that means we're going to sudden death means you get no choices now coming up, so just got to hear the answer from you. Chris first. Chris, what is the name of the invitation-only rugby union team which was conceived at the Leuchter's restaurant in Bradford in 1890? Oh, surely they're the Barbarians. Barbarians is the right answer, Chris. <laughs> OK. Well, Irene, that means you do need to get this one right to stay in the game. Which British athlete was famously led across the line by his father after pulling a hamstring and bursting into tears at the 1992 Olympics? Oh, 92, going back 14 years. An athlete 14 years ago. Um, Steve Ovet. Okay, Steve Ovet to stay in it. Um, it's not, it's a bit after his time as well. It's Derek Redmond. So it was close, Irene, but you have just been shaded out by Chris after a bit of a rocky time in there for Chris as well. But um, Irene, it means you won't be playing in the final round. Would you both please come back and join your teams? Well, Red House Art Group, as it stands, you've lost two brains from the final round. The Eggheads haven't lost any, and the next round's going to be Geography. Wendy, Eliza, or Sue to play Geography. OK. Um, the person we would have liked to have done Geography it, it can't do it, so it's um, about third choice down now for Geography, and it's going to be Sue. Ah, Sue, OK. And uh, who would you like to play? You can't play... Uh, oh, oh course, this is uh, going to Chris or Judith, right. they've both played. CJ? I think CJ. CJ. Sue so against CJ, you know, not a bad choice. You've lost your last two rounds of geography, haven't you, CJ? Probably now my least favourite category. Yeah. <laughs> <Good>. <laughs> well, maybe you could help him find his way into the question room, Sue. <laughs> would you both please take your positions there? <laughs> well, Sue, would you like to go first or second? I'd like to go second, please, Dermot. Well, you've all decided to go second. It hasn't worked so far. Let's see if you can change that, Sue. CJ, your first question. In France, what is the Mistral? Is it a wind, a volcano, or a beach? I believe that's a wind. And that is correct. One to you. OK, then, Sue, your first question. Which English city is known as the City of Dreaming Spires? Is it Oxford, Bath, or Manchester? Well, process of elimination, I think, and I don't think it's Manchester. So it's got to be between Oxford and Bath. Uh, dreaming spires. Mm, it could be dreaming in a bath, I suppose. Um, but I think I might just go for Oxford. Yeah, I the spires. Yeah, well done. It's the right answer, Sue. One apiece. Back to you, CJ, then, for your second. Grossglockner is the highest mountain in which country? France, Switzerland or Austria? I hope. I remembered this correctly because I think I had this a couple of weeks ago, this question, and I hope the answer's Austria. OK, Austria. All this quizzing, I suppose the questions just whirl around in your brain, don't they? They do if I've got it correct. Yeah, it is the right answer. Well done, CJ. Well recalled. OK, Sue, your second. Worcester Beacon is the highest point in which range of hills? The Malverns, the Cotswolds or the Mendips? 
Well, I think I'm going to go for the Malverns. Uh, the Cotswolds are slightly lower down. The Mendips, I can't quite remember where. So, yeah, I'm going to plump for the Malverns around Worcester. Okay, around Worcester, the Malverns. Nodding heads here. Yeah, I think so. Ooh, yes, it's the right answer. Well done, yeah, Sue. Well done, yeah. Sue. To all. Yeah, good, good. Okay, CJ, slip up for either of you here could cost you the round. The seaport of Odessa is located on which body of water? The Caspian Sea, the Black Sea or the Baltic Sea? I think that's the Black Sea port in the Ukraine. Odessa is located on the Black Sea. It's the right answer, CJ. So 3-2 to you, Sue, to level it up and take us into sudden death. The Okavango Delta, the largest inland delta in the world, is a feature of which country? The Ivory Coast, Nigeria or Botswana? The Okavango. I'm really going to have to hazard a guess at this one because I really do not know. And I think I'm going to go for Botswana. Okay, Sue, so why, why are you going for Botswana? I'm just homing in on that one. I'm just fingers crossed and going for it. It's the right answer, Botswana, the Okavango oh, Delta. Well done, be, three all. Good round, so OK. Fun. Well, we're into sudden death and CJ's getting the first question. So, CJ, for what do the letters A, O, N, B stand on a UK map? Area of Outstanding Natural Beauty. Yeah, it's the right answer. A, O, N, B stands for Area of Outstanding Natural Beauty. Well done, CJ. So, back to you then, Sue. And Tananarivo is the capital of which island nation? Well, to be honest, I have never heard of that place name. OK, I'm just going to say the Virgin Islands. OK. Irene, you're well-travelled, aren't you? Um, <laughs> what, would, what, what do you think? Virgin Islands, is it? No, I would ask Jack, because he knows. Oh, Jack? It's Madagascar. Yeah, it's Madagascar. It's Tananarivo. Well, there we are, Sue. You've just been edged out, uh, like those that have gone before you from the Red House Art Group. You won't be playing in the final round either. Would you both please come back and join your teams? Right. Time to pull yourselves together. <laughs> so we're going to get one of these eggheads out. As it stands, you've lost three brains from the final round. The eggheads haven't lost any yet, but uh, that can change with this round. And it's history. And Wendy or Eliza? They, they could do eeny, meeny, miny, mo between the two of them at the end there. Um, I have confidence in both of them. So do I. So do <laughs> so I. It's, it's, <laughs> it's going to be a question of who leaps up, um, and I think it's going to be Wendy. Yeah. <laughs> it's entirely misplaced confidence, I have to say. You've got to choose an Give egghead oh, to play, and it's Daphne or Kevin. Um, Daphne, because she's so friendly and she's my heroine. She, oh, and oh, I too, oh, actually. Oh, oh. Well, they all are, really. Always has I've got all their pigs on my wall. I <laughs> scare the children to bed with them. you, Wendy. <laughs> Wendy and Daphne, to make sure there's no conferring, would you please take your positions in the question room? Right, come on, Wendy. History, how's your history? Well, I'm quite interested in art history, but that's about the only history I'm even vaguely interested in. This is my nightmare round. No, it's not. <laughs> Daphne's become a pushover of late, losing in any old subject these days. I'm Absolutely. So I've heard. Anyone could beat her. <laughs> Wendy, how do you want to play this? You've all gone second up to now. It hasn't worked. You're going to change that or stay with it? No, I think we'll be consistent. I'll go second. OK. Well, Daphne, you're in first then. History question coming your way now. In which city was the explorer Christopher Columbus born? Athens, Istanbul or Genoa? He was born in Genoa. Damn it. Genoa, I, I yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's the right answer. Well done, Daphne. One to you. OK, your first question, Wendy. Which country awarded the Iron Cross to soldiers during the First and Second World Wars? Germany, France or Italy? Well, it doesn't sound very... Latin, so I'm guessing it's not Italy. France, no, it doesn't sound right. I'm guessing Germany. It's the right answer. Good yes. one, Wendy. One to you. Daphne, your second. Henry VII and Mary I were both members of which royal family? <laughs> Tudor, Stuart or Hanover? Tudors. And that is correct. So two to you. OK, Wendy, your second. 
Formed in 1920, the headquarters of the League of Nations were in which city? Geneva, Stockholm or Dublin? This is a complete guess. Um, could be Geneva. The UN went to Geneva. I'll guess Geneva. Geneva, you're saying for the League of Nations, it's the right answer. Well Yay. done, Wendy. Going very strongly here. Well, let's see if Daphne slips up with this one, could give you a chance. Daphne, in the first century AD, which rebellious British chieftain was captured and taken in chains to Rome, though he was later pardoned after speaking eloquently to the Roman Senate? Was it Prasutagus, Caraticus, or Lugatorix? Well, I haven't heard of the third one, and I think Prasutagus was the um, husband of Boadicea. And I, I do think it's Caractacus. Caractacus is the right answer. Well done, Daphne. So, 3-2. Got to get this, Wendy, as you know. I won't remind you. Just uh, listen carefully. Which medieval figure married Joan, the fair maid of Kent, described as the most beautiful of all England? Was it Richard the Lionheart, John of Gaunt, or the Black Prince? Oh, my goodness. Um, I was dreading having to answer any questions at any time about royal people. I have no idea. John of Gaunt. Okay. Uh, Red House Art Group, any ideas there? Richard the Lionheart never married. Um, I think it might be the Black Prince, but I'm not sure. Yeah. Jack, what were you doing playing in that entertainment <laughs> round, man? Yeah. Yeah. It's the Black Prince, as uh, your son Jack was just telling us, Wendy. So there we are again. If you. Choose to go second, uh, no chance for a reprieve, I'm afraid. That means that you won't be playing in the final round either. Would you both please come back and join your teams? Well, you know what, Wendy? I think you lot were a bit mean putting Jack into playing that entertainment round. He's answered just about every other question correctly. <laughs> yeah. anyway, Our strategy was flawed. It hasn't quite worked for you today, but it can still be rescued at the 11th hour by Eliza. I don't it's think what... so. <laughs> It's what we've been playing towards. It's time for the final round, which as always is general knowledge. But I'm afraid those of you who lost those head-to-heads won't be allowed to take part in this round. So, Wendy, Jack, Irene and Sue from the Red House Art Group, would you all please leave the studio? Well, Eliza, you're playing to win the Red House Art Group £21,000. Judith, Kevin, CJ, Daphne and Chris, a full set of eggheads there. You're playing for something which money can't buy, the egghead's reputation. As usual, I will ask each team three questions in turn, and this time the questions are all general knowledge and you are allowed to confer. And Eliza, the question is, is your one brain better than the egghead's five? I'm sure it's not. <laughs> <laughs> it could be. Eliza, would you like to go first or second? I'd like to go second, please. OK, eggheads, uh, Eliza's decided that you should go first, so here's your question. In which country does a traditional sauna experience involve rolling naked in the snow and being beaten by birch twigs? Turkey, Finland or Germany? Over to Chris. <laughs> <laughs> what are you implying, CJ? <laughs> well, yeah, it's uh, Finland. Yeah. Finland is the right answer. Well done, eggheads. So first one to you. OK, Eliza. Best of luck. Thank you. What type of weapon was invented by Jim Bowie? in the 19th century? A knife, a rifle, or a pistol? I always used to think that one pronounced his name Bowie until somebody told me, no, <laughs> you're wrong, it's Bowie. Um, and I think it was a knife. Yeah, knife is the right answer. Yes, the Bowie knife. <laughs> OK, here we go. Your second question, Egghead, sir. In the obsolete tripartite system of education, children were sent either to a grammar school, a secondary modern school, or what other type of establishment? Art school, technical school, or farming college? Oh, I remember technical, technical. schools. Technical. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, yes, technical school. Technical school, it's the right answer, Egghead, so two to you. Right, uh, good start, Eliza. Let's see if you can keep it up. Hope the uh, Egghead's slipping. You could be in there. What's the name of the figure of speech in which the same thing is said twice in different words? Ellipsis, parenthesis, or tautology? OK, it's not parenthesis. I know that's, um, like, within brackets. So we've got ellipsis or tautology, and 
I think it's tautology. The figure of speech in which the same thing is said twice in different words. I'm going to say them in the different words here. It's right. That's correct. Tautology. Well done. To all. Uh, eggheads on a ship. What are the bowers? Masts, anchors or sails? I just think it might be an anchor. There is such a thing as a bower anchor, so they're yeah, going to be anchors. Yeah, I think they're anchors, yeah. yeah. They're, not, they're not sails. Or anchors are in the bows. Anchors. Okay. This must be okay. Yeah. Right, you do it then. Yeah. Well, I so say there is such a thing as a bower anchor, so they're going to be anchors. The bowers are anchors. It's the right answer, eggheads. So, Eliza, you get this right, we're going into sudden death. Best of luck. The Tuileries Gardens are located next to which Parisian tourist attraction? Louvre, the Eiffel Tower, or Montmartre? I am the least well-travelled person in the world, I think. I don't think it's Montmartre. I've got a feeling that the Eiffel Tower is surrounded by paving and stuff like that. Oh, so I'm going to keep my fingers crossed and say it's the Louvre. Okay, the Louvre. Now, so many of you have failed at this point in the head to heads. If you fail, the game's over. But you haven't. The Louvre is the right answer. The Tuileries <laughs> Gardens. <laughs> the Louvre. And uh, it means we're into sudden death, which is a fantastic performance. Whatever's happened, you've taken the Eckheads on your lonesome there all the way to sudden death. But we now remove the safety net. There uh, oh. are no choices coming up in front of you. Let's see how the Eckheads do with this. Blot on the Landscape and Porterhouse Blue are books by which author? Tom Blot Sharp. on the Landscape, Porterhouse Blue. Tom Sharp. Tom Sharp. Tom Sharp. Tom Sharp. It echoed down the line. <laughs> uh, Tom Sharp did indeed write Blot on the Landscape and Porterhouse Blue. So barely a chance to draw breath there, uh, Eliza, oh, before it comes dear. back to you. A fantastic performance. Listen carefully. What famous building now stands on the site of the defunct Newgate Jail? <laughs> Um, I've not got the faintest clue. I don't know London at all. Um, I'm grabbing at straws here and I'm going to say Marble Arch. Okay, Marble Arch. I think you think of their connections with, um, with justice and hanging and Tyburn mm. and all that, yeah. Mm. It's not the right answer, no, no, Eliza. It it's not I right. It's, it wasn't. it's the it's the old <laughs> Bailey, the central criminal oh, court, the old Bailey. That. It means eggheads, you've won. <laughs> Eliza, fantastic performance there. It's just that bit more difficult, isn't it? Having no one there to, oh, it's to work it out. Dreadful <laughs> to be <laughs> sitting no, here all by yourself. Oh, well, it's that's scary. No one has done it yet on their own, but I'm sure it will be done. And you came very, very close indeed, Eliza. Good attempt, and thanks very much for being such good opponents here today. I'm sure the eggheads will agree. Um, eggheads, you've done what comes naturally to them. Your winning streak continues. I'm afraid you won't be going home then with the £21,000, which means, of course, our money rolls over to the next show. This is quite a streak, eggheads. Congratulations. Can anyone beat you? We really do need to ask that question. Well, do join us next time to see if the new challengers have the brain to defeat the eggheads. £22,000 says they don't. Goodbye. Do you want to appear as intellectual as our eggheads? Well, you can do with the help of this digital dictionary. Simply answer this question. Which footballer was England's top scorer at the 2004 European Championships? A, David Beckham, B, Michael Owen, or C, Wayne Rooney? To be in with a chance of winning, call 090-11-110-890. Lines close at midnight tonight and calls are charged at 25 pence. Coping with an impossible guest, the Basil Forty Way, coupled with a long-distance duck in a low and low. Comedy doubles just half an hour away, here on BBC Two.